In my last video, I was home in Nebraska for the holidays, where I shot a bunch of deep sky stuff, as well as the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, and the Geminids meteor shower. Now since then, I sadly haven't been doing any deep sky stuff. I have been, however, enjoying my summer by seeing friends, <laughs> and gazing at other things in the sky. Now I did occasionally do some lunar and planetary imaging and I managed to squeeze every detail out of my Celestron 4SE with our gas giants Saturn and Jupiter. And after a year of going without, I finally replaced my broken Canon TF5i with another Canon, the EOS RP full frame mirrorless camera. Now I have to say, after doing deep sky imaging all this time, it is so nice to go back to a camera like this for wide field work. It's, it's so immediate and you don't have to spend a lot of time outside. I got to do some fun projects like this multi-exposure of the moon's path over Manhattan. And I even shot an eerily glowing amber moon, which I realized later was due to the recent wildfires from Canada and the western United States. And one thing I've always wanted to do was shoot the Milky Way. And now that I have a new Canon and a wide angle lens, that time has finally come. All that's left is to find some dark skies. And of course, I knew just where to go. They say third time's a charm, and it happened to be my third time back on Diamond Cove. The usual suspects came out to greet me. From the rafter of turkeys to the sherbet sunsets, it looks like the island survived the pandemic just fine. I even came out of retirement to act in a friend's play reading on the island, and I got to celebrate by cooking a nice lobster dinner for the friends who graciously hosted me on the island this year and every year before. Alright, let's get back to the Milky Way. Here's a quick rundown of my equipment I'll be using. Okay, for tonight's equipment lineup, I'm using my Ikoto tripod with a ball head mount. Sitting on top of that is the Canon EOS RP full frame mirrorless camera. And attached to that is the Rokinon 14 millimeter wide angle lens, F2.8. It's a manual lens, which means I won't be able to set the aperture or the focus um, automatically through my camera, which is fine. Since I'm shooting the Milky Way, I should have all my settings dialed in before I start clicking away. And speaking of clicking away, I'm going to be using this intervalometer, which comes in handy. Uh, it is made by Photo Olex, and you know, it's, it's a very basic intervalometer. It, has, um, you know, it lights up, it's battery operated, and it does the job just fine. So that's it, that's the, that's all I'll be using. No star tracker, gonna just do it manually and uh, hope for the best. So a few hours before astronomical dark, I went out to the street and loaded up PhotoPills, which is an astrophotography planning app. I clicked on night AR mode, moved my phone around and lined up the Milky Way where I wanted it to be, and here are the results.
astrophotographer, it's easy for me to get caught up in capturing as many images as possible that I forget about the joy of visual observation. You know, the thing that costs nothing but reaps so much wonderment. So after I finished imaging, I just stood there, looking at the galactic core of the Milky Way with my own eyes. And that familiar wonder came back. What a show it was. I was sad to leave those dark skies of Maine, but there was still one last thing to do. Yeah. What are you about to do? Or jump club, is that what it's called? Oh my gosh. How, how was it? Oh my God, it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're in the club. And with that, it was time to leave Maine. But Mother Nature had one last show for me, possibly the greatest sunset I've ever seen in my life, from 30,000 feet in the air. <laughs>